Pitocin. Pitocin, Pitocin, Pitocin. So Pitocin can lead to more intervention. <gasps> I know. So when you say yes to Pitocin, you're also saying yes to other interventions like continuous fatal monitoring and IV fluids. The difference between Pitocin and Oxytocin. So Oxytocin is a natural hormone that is released from the body. It helps to make your contractions stronger, but it's also known for being the love hormone because it's released when we cuddle and when we breastfeed. And this oxytocin that's naturally released from our body, it is designed to have our contractions feel good and it helps to progress our labor. Now, Pitocin is using a synthetic, so synthetic version of oxytocin. So it's not the one that is naturally released from our bodies. Because of this, it can cause your contractions to feel stronger. So more intense than your natural ones do. And it can also cause your contractions to feel closer together and very rapid. So for that reason, you may lead more to wanting pain relieving medications like an epidural. So when you say yes to Pitocin, you also have to get IV fluids and you also have to get continuous fatal monitoring. So yes, there are benefits to continuous fatal monitoring because you can monitor and see your baby's heart rate, but there also are side effects. It is associated with a significant chance of having a C-section and it also is associated with instrumental vaginal birth. So having forceps or vacuum extractions within your birth. So those who have inductions and epidurals are six times more likely to have an emergency C-section. So when a queen knows the, the risks and the benefits of Pitocin, she can make an informed decision. And if Pitocin is necessary and that's what she wants, then by all means. But if Pitocin is not necessary, and not something that she is gravitating towards, it can trigger a cascade of interventions. So a cascade of interventions mean this in intervention can lead to another, and then lead to another, and then lead to another. So this test is done during pregnancy um, to diagnose certain genetic disorders, birth defects, and other conditions in an unborn baby. This test is usually done between 15 and 20 weeks of pregnancy. I'm not sure if any of you guys have done this. You can comment below if you did it. If you didn't, let me know what your thoughts are. So when you're doing this test, they use an ultrasound to locate the placenta and the fetus, slide to the area where a needle will be inserted through the abdomen into the uterus to remove a sample of amniotic fluid surrounding the baby. I previously met a mom and she did this test. And when she did the test, they let her know that they did find some birth defects and that her baby would be born with autism. And she was so scared during her pregnancy. And even when her baby was born, she was scared because she thought her baby was born with autism. Flash, flash forward a few years, her son is now 12 and her, her son is completely normal. So they said that he was going to be born with autism, but he was born completely normal. And that happens a lot of the times when you do these tests, they're not 100% accurate. So just be mindful of that, whether or not you would want to do something like that. So other risks include injury to you or your baby, infection or preterm labor, leaking amniotic fluid, miscarriage, and needle injury. So common symptoms are after they do the test, you might leak continuously leak amniotic fluid from the puncture of the needle, fever or chills, cramping or belly pains, and changes in the activity, so how much your baby moves throughout the day. If you are wanting to do some testing and you want to get some genetic testing, there are different ways that you can do this that aren't as invasive. Just because the testing is an option doesn't mean that it's the right choice for you, the right choice for everyone. You can say no. Number three is episiotomy. So yes, doctors still cut women in their private parts. I know it's quite... <laughs> so an episiotomy is when they cut a woman's private part with surgical scissors to enlarge the vaginal opening upon delivery. So in the 80s, it's been proven that episiotomies don't improve fatal or maternal health outcomes. The fact is receiving an episiotomy won't prevent further tearing and it can even cause more tearing. 
I mean, it makes sense, right? So like third or fourth degree tears where tears pass through the rectum taking longer to heal. A natural tear is better than an episiotomy. And you wanna make that clear in your birth plan prior to delivery that you would not like an episiotomy. And also know that your baby's head is designed to mold and fit through your birth canal. Your body is designed to stretch for your baby no matter the size. So if you look at this picture here, you'll see that there's spaces between the skull bones and this allows for the baby's head to mold as the skull bones meet and overlap, allowing your baby's head to fit more easily as it travels through your pelvis. Isn't that beautiful? You have options you have alternatives. If you learn anything from this video, you learn that you do not have to say yes to every medical intervention or examination that comes your way. And when you do have an intervention or an examination that does come your way, know that there are benefits and there are risks. Um, you might feel like, oh, you might be hurting someone's feelings. You're not, you're not. When you say no, they go home to their families, they go home to their babies, their kids, and they move on with their lives. When you say no, you're standing up for yourself and you're advocating for yourself. You're still an amazing mother. You're still making safe choices. You're still making informed, informed choices. And if you're a medical professional watching this, when a mother says no, listen to her, provide her her benefits, provide her her risks, and if she still decides, if she decides to say yes, support her through those decisions. If she decides to say no, support her through those decisions. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're new to this channel, click that red juicy button down below, down below. It says subscribe, it says subscribe. And I'll see you beautiful queens in the next video.